I published one of my research papers in a journal, Language Teaching Research, that is ranked as number four out of 1,126 journals on Scopus in language and linguistics. That's top 0.3%, while Q1 journals are a mere top 25%. So in here, I reveal the exact process that you can copy to also publish your papers in absolutely top high impact journals in your specific field. Top Q1 journals researched by Springer shows have rejections rates of above 80%. So that means that out of 10 submitted papers, only two might be accepted, or maybe even just one. Why? If you talk to the editors and reviewers, one of the main reasons is insufficient contribution to the field. In other words, top journals are looking for research papers that are truly novel, really important to the field, and make a considerable contribution to research and practice. So if we know that this is true, how can we find such groundbreaking research topics to really increase our chances in publishing in absolutely top journals? Here's a very simple three-step process that I used to publish my paper in that 0.3% journal. So step number one, you need to look outside of your discipline because here's the first problem. Many research topics are like airplane meals, bland, reheated imitations of real restaurant meals. They make the reviewer cringe at the very sight. Why? Because most researchers become profoundly knowledgeable about a profoundly narrow area. And as a result, we remain blissfully ignorant of what's going on in adjacent fields, even within our own discipline, let alone outside of our discipline. This is like having a box above your head that doesn't allow you to see what's outside of that box. And all of the other researchers in your field are also within that black box. So to make real impact and get more citations, you need to look for ideas outside of your field. You are likely to find research problems and solutions to those problems that nobody else in your field can see. So how do you actually do this in practice? First of all, you want to schedule time in your calendar for exploring interesting topics adjacent to your topic from other fields. You can do this through reading papers, of course, but you don't have to. You can also listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos. You can read popular science books in related fields that are sort of lighter examples of academic research. Now, to make it a little bit more concrete, let me give you an example. So I am interested in the professional discrimination of non-native speakers as English teachers. When I saw the book Invisible Women, which was about the discrimination that women have faced at work, at home, in different areas of their life throughout, you know, the history, really, I knew that it was perfect reading material for me. Why? because it also addresses the issue of discrimination that certain people face, but it's not related to my field, English language teaching. Therefore, I could learn a lot of really interesting study findings, study ideas, methodologies, and so on, that very likely nobody else in my field would ever know about. And this is exactly what happened. I was able to find research ideas that I had never even realized were possible, that now I can apply to my own field of interest, which is the discrimination of non-native speakers in English language teaching. The second point is practical experience. Let me illustrate. One day I was sat in a meeting with other course book authors that were writing a course book for English language teaching with me. There were also some editors in that room. And as I sat there, there were about a dozen of us or so. I suddenly realized that everybody in that room, apart from one person, was a native speaker. And then everybody in that room as well, apart from one person, was white. And this struck me as really odd, bearing in mind that the vast majority, 80% of people who use English, are not native speakers. And probably the vast majority of them are not white either. So I started wondering, would it be the same for other course books? in English language teaching, that most of the authors are also white 
and native speakers. So since I am interested in the professional discrimination of non-native speakers, that struck me as a really interesting idea. And from having read a lot in my field, I already knew that there was no research done on that. However, it wasn't me doing the literature review that gave me this idea. It was that practical experience that I had sitting in that meeting room. And this is precisely what led to that study that was published in Language Teaching Research, the journal that is ranked number four out of over 1,100 journals. So because of that practical experience that led to this research idea and a very simple study that really a five-year-old could carry out, I published a paper in the absolute top journal in my field. Are you ready to implement these strategies to publish research papers in high impact journals in your discipline? Are you a professor, a researcher or a PhD student who would really like to advance their career, make a really big contribution to the field by publishing more papers in better journals while actually working less? and enjoying the whole process, then I've got really good news for you. I've just opened some slots in my calendar and you can book a free one-to-one -one consultation with me where we'll dive deeper and identify the specific challenge and bottleneck that is blocking you from achieving your full potential. And then we'll also clarify your goals. And then at the end, I'll outline an action plan for you that will help you to achieve all your academic goals, publish more papers and advance your career. If this sounds like something that you want to do, book the free one-to-one -one consultation right now. The link is in the description of this video. So how do you actually do this in practice? Well, you need to get out of the ivory tower that too many researchers and professors are locked in and you need to get out on the ground and actually see what professionals in your field, what problems they're dealing with and what's the situation outside of academia because especially professors who have spent you know the last five ten years you know first you did a PhD then you did postdoc now you're a professor it's been so long that you're stuck in one environment interacting with other professors PhD students and so on it's very easy to lose sight of what's actually happening outside of academia and that's why having that practical experience can give you research ideas that nobody else in your field would have ever got because they're still stuck in the ivory tower. Now, point number three is research gaps. And you might be surprised why I mention it the last. The reason for this is that you are constantly told that you need to find research gaps. And this is what everybody in your field will be doing. So it's very unlikely to lead to truly groundbreaking research topics and finding ideas that are so novel that nobody else in your field has seen. That said, it is the third component of finding high impact research topics. Once you have some practical experience to spark ideas, once you have insights from other fields to spark ideas, you do need to find the research gap in your field as well. So to do this, try to imagine your research in your discipline as a really big field. And when you walk around that field, you want to notice holes in the ground and these holes are places where no research has been done thus far. On the other hand, there will be little hills or even maybe mountains where tons of research has been done. And you don't want to go anywhere near that mountain or hill because your study is not going to be novel. So you want to avoid that. The best holes are the ones that are the biggest and where you cannot see any researchers. So you might find holes where you will see already crowds of researchers around that hole and that indicates that there's already research being conducted. So ideally speaking, you want to find a research hole that is big, deep, and there are no other scientists around it. That was my research hole with that study that I did in language teaching research. And the advantage of finding such a big hole with no other scientists around it is that it doesn't lead to just one study. I've already done three studies on this topic because there are so many angles that you can take and so many different ways in which you can get down that hole that then it leads to a lot of really impactful papers, each of which is making a novel contribution because nothing else 
has been done thus far there. So in more practical terms, how do you actually find these research holes that are deep and where there are no scientists around them? Well, first of all, you need to look for insufficient or lack of research. Basically that no studies have been conducted on this particular narrow topic. You can also look at the limitations of previous research. Again, to ideally find places, such big limitations that no other researcher so far had has addressed that limitation. And then you also want to look at lack of consensus on the topic, meaning that a lot of studies have been conducted, but they lead to contradictory or different results. So this is how you find really powerful research topics to get you published in top five, 1% or even top 0.3% journals like I did. But now that you know how to find such groundbreaking ideas that will get your papers to those top journals, you also need to learn exactly how to package those research ideas at the standard expected of you by those very top journals because otherwise your papers will still get rejected or you'll get major, major revisions, wasting months of your precious time revising and resubmitting the paper when you could be producing more papers or sitting on a beach enjoying your holidays. So watch this next video in which I show you exactly how to write research papers better than 90% of researchers to really increase your chances of publishing in Q1 journals.